You're gonna no. maybe you want to sit out here and we'll bring the food to you. No, no, I'd yeah. rather sit there. I'm wasting the light. I don't like when it's my face. Okay. Oh, I see what you're saying. If I sit there, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we'll already open the game up. Just uh, move that. Thank you. These are kosher? Yeah. Oh, yeah, these are. This is uh, Trader Joe's. Yeah. Okay. These look like patties. You know the patties? Yeah. All right, so <clears throat> maybe I'll say I started a little bit about Torah with something we're going to learn on. Shavuot here, we'll learn upstairs, all the way upstairs. Over here, they set up table from here till there, till the end. So, like, Curring station? Uh, a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff. I was here a few times, Shavuot. Last two times, I was here with you. Yeah. You have a carving station all night. No, they don't. I remember I came back with a nap. That's what she said. That's what I'm saying. Are you serious? Me. I'm sorry, uh, this year I had to just kidding, it's a joke. <laughs> Cheesecake factory. Okay. <laughs> so let me ask this question. We know that in Mugilat uh, Root, there were a lot of players. First there's a family, Elimelech, his wife Naomi, who were leaders for the generation. And they had two sons, they were married. To two women, Ruth and, and Arpa, and they died. Elmelo died. Naomi then went back to Israel. She somehow arranged Boaz, her cousin, to meet with Ruth, and he married her. And eventually, David Amalek was born from that union. So we know that every story, so the question is, why do we read it on Shavuot? Which I'd like to answer. And there is a um, Koshib Shad. The reason why we read it on Shavuot is because one Shad is because David Amalek was born on Shavuot and died on Shavuot. And this tells the story of... Mm. David the Melech. His origin story. The origins. Another explanation is that in the Psukim, it's clear that this is when the story of Ruth happened, about the time when they were harvesting wheat, because uh, Ruth came to Boaz's wheat the to field. collect to the field, to collect from uh, Leket, or whatever falls down, there's a law that you cannot pick up and you leave it for poor people. They were poor, she came to pick it up. That's how she met him. Another reason is because Shavuot talks about Gerim. She became Gerim, Ruth. And on Shavuot, all Jews became Gerim. In which way? Jews are Jews. Right. Because uh, there is a way to look, to learn, to see Matan Torah, to view giving of the Torah as conversion. So even though we were biologically descendants of Abraham and Sariyako, but in a certain way we converted. So we read about Gideon. But there is another reason which I'd like to speak now, quickly to tell you. If I would ask you who is the good character which called the uh, protagonist in the story and who is mm, so to speak antagonists in the story right. do we have even antagonists do we have like do we have like a fight a conflict between good and evil here no mm -hmm. we don't have if you could say who was the protagonist you would probably give me the first name would be yes. Ruth. Second would be her uh, mother-in-law. Her mother-in-law. No. Third would be, okay, go to Naomi. Third would be Boaz. Boaz, the Boaz one who married her. So Boaz was good. I'm saying you almost burnt her because of Boaz, no? You were almost what? Didn't they almost? Uh, didn't they? No, am I confusing the story? No. Yeah. Well, no. 
Bo as was protagonist. Who were like so to speak antagonists? Some people died. They were punished by God. Elimelech left Israel and died. His two sons died. There's also Plony Almoni. Elimelech is Naomi's husband. Mm-hmm. Boaz took her as a as a as a wife. <laughs> There's also Plony Almoni. He was closer relative because it was supposed to be Ibum. Mm. Ibum is when you marry your brother's, deceased brother's wife if they don't have children. So, the Ru, Ru, yeah, Ruth's husband died without children. So, there was a relative whose cousin, his, uh, the uh, Mahlon's cousin, who was supposed to do the mitzvah first but he didn't do it because he wasn't sure about Ruth's Yichus mm-hmm. lineage so he, because she was he knew, he knew. He knew. that's why well first of all every gear could be a problem no. we could always clear, uh, claim that how do you know they really how do we know this and that? I want to only marry That's someone. Not the issue. was an additional issue because she was from Moab. Ah. And there was a whole debate if a woman convert. from Moab oh, a could convert. convert. Mm-hmm. The man cannot convert, that's for sure. Lotavo Moabi Gal Hashem. But woman, it turned out to be permissible. But they didn't know, so uh, Boaz established the halacha that you allowed. Uh-huh. And since then, we're learning in Masechet Yibamas that you allowed. Uh-huh. Since then, we're always passing that you allowed. What's the other uh, daughter's kid's name? Lo's daughter. Amon. Amon. They're also bad. Yeah. Uh-huh. And, and, and none of them is converted to Judaism, or one of them is allowed? One, there was one Amon woman Amon. from Amon also that married Shlomo Amalek. So Amon is also allowed. Women are allowed. Women are allowed to convert. This whole question, why not men but only women? Because they did not bring food when Jewish people were gone from Egypt, right. and they were passing their country, and they were cousins. They were passing by, and they did not give them hospitality. Can a Mali convert? It's always machlokit. Two million Jews. How do you give a whole nation hospitality in the desert? Imagine a city or whatever, two million people, hospitality. You can't, you know, it's like you're being overridden. It's like America can't bring in 300,000, uh, you know, Mexicans with a country of half a billion people. We're being overrun. Imagine your land or whatever, Amon or Moab, and you have two million Jews that came out of Egypt. How do you feed them in the desert? How do you give them supplies? It's not like it's unlimited, right? You know, there's, there was a story in, in Holocaust. There was a famous picture. There was a girl about 12 years old. Mm-hmm. She was wearing rags. She was walking through the mud field after the war. And she was carrying on her shoulders a kid, like three-year-old, four-year-old kid, boy. So there was a photographer who took a picture of that, mm-hmm. and the picture became viral. Mm-hmm. Went all over the world. <clears throat> to see what's going on in Europe after the Holocaust. She was wearing nothing, almost nothing. But she was carrying her son, her brother across the, across, the, across the field. So when she came to America, they met her, she became famous. They, and they asked her publicly, she was 12 years, 13 years old. They said, but wasn't your brother, wasn't this boy heavy? How did you carry him? He was heavy. She said, no, he wasn't heavy. He was my brother. So. It's not difficult. It's my family. Yeah. That's the real Um, Because over here, it's different in America. Your neighbors are Mexican. Let them in. They're all neighbors. There's no love for the Mexican. But over here, it was a real. It was like two tribes. Let's say, imagine you in Kalamazoo, somewhere in. Uh, Congo, when there's two tribes, they're, they are, uh, they're really coming from the same family. Mm. And one tribe is running away from genocide. So 
So he's not going to help them, just leave them to die? No. So you don't do that. This is also still, there was still a tribe, even though there was a big tribe, okay, two million Jews, okay, right. <clears throat> um, but anyway, in Megillat, the root, the protagonists, no, I should say antagonists, those who did not do good, those that root does not condone, those that root considers to be quote unquote bad. Mm-hmm. They didn't do anything bad. Because Alamelech who left Israel, was he allowed to live? Yes. Nachlo- there was a drought, there was hunger. <clears throat> His two sons, were they allowed to marry them? Yes, because they, they converted, you're allowed to marry them. Ploni Almoni, who didn't marry Ruth, was he allowed to do it? Also was allowed to do it. So, there was no really bad people. It's just that there were no people who were doing chesed. And the root is telling us that when it comes to Torah, we're learning from Torah that you have to extend yourself to your brother. Torah teaches us chesed. Torah is built on chesed, on uh, doing chesed for others. Mm-hmm. So, <clears throat> so um, that's why we read it. Um, according to my Rebbe, that's why why we read Miglat Rud to tell us what Torah is all about. Because the essence of the Torah is to do chesed. In the beginning of Miglat Rud, it describes a story of tragedy, sadness, death, doom, hopelessness, helplessness. At the end of Rud, if you look first awesome. first seven psukim of Rud and the last seven psukim. And the end of Ruth, it describes when uh, Ovid was uh, born, the uh, son of Ruth and Boaz, uh, describes the story of resilience, the continuation, uh, happiness, family, uh, ties, and hope. And in the middle of Miglad Ruth, you have a story of chesed, of Boaz taking a orphan, poor, non-lineaged, non-Jewish, uh, uh, you know, girl, to be his wife, and he was from a high society. So, very good shidduch. Very good shidduch, it turned out, because the David Amalek came from it. <laughs> and um, so you have something Negative, turning to positive. Oh, that's positive. But what made it, what changed it, what turned it around is the act of chesed. So in our own lives, and our private lives, uh, we have to overcome the barrier of not doing chesed, but all the time we do chesed, it's a good is going only going to bring good things. <clears throat> so therefore, I want to thank everyone for coming. Let's see our Gemara. Our plan today is to get to the Mishnah. We are on Amar of Chizda. Amar of Chizda. Do you have it, Mark? <clears throat> yeah. It's like in the middle of the page. Oh, I see it. Let's do so. Let's let's run. Amar Rav Chizda. Rav Chizda said, "Behema, an animal, chetzer shall nochri. Half of it belongs to a goy. Vechetzer shall Israel, and half of it belongs to a Jew." Now the question is, are you allowed to shecht it on Yom Tov or not? Mutar le shachta be yom tov. It's permissible to shachta on yom tov. What's the explanation? De efshar le kazait basar beloshchita. It's impossible to have even one kazait of meat without shchita of an entire animal. 
That was the whole question was what? What was the question? It's a sur to do, prepare to prepare to food or shech, bogoi. Over here, when you shech this animal, the goy is going to come and take his half. He's not going to just leave it to you. He's not going to tell you, okay, you eat the, the entire animal. Since you shech, it's not the So now you can have my half. No, he's going to take his half and he's going to eat it. So maybe you shech it for goy. The answer is, because it's impossible for me to it's impossible for me to eat my half, even one kazai, without shechting an entire animal. So it comes out when I did the shechita, I shechted it for myself for a Jew. It happened de facto that Goy also got his half, but the actual act of shechita was warranted. It was hundred percent legitimate. Isa, next case. Isa chetzir shel nachri chetzir shel Israel. If we have a dough, half of it belongs to Goy and half of it belongs to Israel. Asur lafot av yom tov. It's asur to bake it on yom tov. What's the difference between? Uh, um, As we said, you can shaft, you can shaft, uh, you can cut a piece of dough. Because you could split it. Because you can split it. The ha'efshar le limiflega bilisha. Because it's possible to divide it. In other words, you don't need to uh, bake the whole thing in order to eat the juice half. You could take the juice half, separate it, and bake it. So I'm if you sure. could do it, do it. But then we also learned that before, <clears throat> that, um, let's say for cooking for Yom Tov, if you're cooking something more than you need, but if it's one piece and it's going to help, it's going to enhance, let's say, the food, then it's allowed, right? Yes. So over here, can you use that same logic? Or can you take that full dough and say, I'm really, I'm just cooking for myself because it's a no, piece, it's going to bake better. Half of it is a good. I understand. The good doesn't want his half baked. You're not baking it for him, you're just using it. He has to it take it. it. We're going to give a better explanation. One second. Yudha is, Misha is making the following connection. He says that earlier we learned that you could put a lot of food right. into an oven, into a pot. Even if you're not going to eat all of it on Yom Tov. Right. Even if uh, you're only going to have the second half, the 50% that you're going to eat is for Yom Tov. The other 50% is you're doing Malacha. That's permissible. Those 50% is permissible. But why this 50% that belongs to a go is not permissible? Even though it's one action. So, Yehuda probably wants the answer, right? Yehuda says, the difference obviously on the surface is that over there, the whole thing belongs to a Jew. Uh-huh. Over here, have it belongs to a Goy. Right. But it's not, not, still not sufficient because even part that belongs to a Jew, but I want to, even the food belongs to me, but I want to cook it for the next day, it's not permissible. It becomes like not warranted cooking. So just like cooking for next day, even if it's Jewish food, is is prohibited. prohibited. Cooking non-Jewish food, Goy's food, even for today, is the same prohibition. The same prohibition. So therefore, how are we answering this question? How are we really answering this question? The answer is at least the answer is one word: potential. We couldn't figure out what I mean. Potentially, it's allowed, regardless, right? Is that what you're saying? Potent- at least, if it's Jews' food, if you have an air of tafshilin, potentially, it's... it could be eaten on Yom Tov for uh-huh. a Jew. Whereas, the Goyz, even, but doesn't, doesn't even have to potentially uh-huh. eat it by, by a Jew. Not, not because not kosher, because he, is, he did not relinquish. Uh, okay. He did not sign the paper that says, you could have the second half also. It belongs to him. He retains it. He wants to take it back. He wants to. It's, it wants to be in. So it's that answers your question, right? Yeah. Does take common practice an animal for two households to split it and they would? We'll see later on. There was. We'll see, we'll see later on. Imagine the only way you get meat is you buy a cow. Yeah, it's expensive. You have to split with a few. Eighty years ago, it was like that. Sixty years ago. They didn't have butchers sixty years ago. They did, but three, four families get together. The quickest time. Just going to butcher a cow and then wait. He would have orders, people waiting on, 
Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. The cow had to have been sold already, and then he would butcher and do everything else with it, and then they would separate. Well, today in America, every animal, Chatzel <laughs> Israel, Chatzel Nochre, half Jews, half Goyes, because we don't we eat, eat half the, the back half of the animal. Well, we only eat the front half. There's a question on the line what's the prohibition of doing this on Yom Tov? Cooking on Yom Tov is prohibited for a non Jew. Oh. It's good for non Jews. Okay. Now, Excellent. Wow, look at that. Mesa Rabhana Barar Khaniloy. Rabhana Bar Khaniloy is asking a question. Isat Klovim. A dough that uh, was made for dogs as dog food. Bizman Sharoyim Bizman Sharoyim Ochlamata. If the shepherds also eat it, Khayevit Bhala, you have to separate Khala, Uma Arvin Ba. And you're allowed to use it for eruv, and you're allowed to use for shetufei chaserot, shetufei mivuot, u'mevarchin aleo, and you make hamotzi on it, u'mezamnin aleo, and you or what light is going to be? I don't participate in zimun. And zimun, when the effort be yom tov, and you're allowed to bake it on yom tov. Thank you, Mark. Ve'adam yotzeh bo yidei chovato bepesach. And if it happens to be chametz, you could fulfill the mitzvah of matzah with it. So Gemara asks, Ve'amai ve'efshar leil limiflaga belisha. We're talking about a dough or bread that was baked for dogs. And it's really dog food. But it's kosher for people, and sometimes even uh, a shepherd could eat it, or shepherds help. They would eat it. So we're saying like this, that if you eat it, if you're able to eat it, they have to make a mozza on it. It has all the laws of being of, of being. It sounds bread. like the dog is eating human bread, not the man is eating dog bread. That's what it sounds but like. But Gemara says that there are certain ingredients they, they put into it, uh, ingredients that don't go into human bread. Like seeds and like straw, like they quickly do it. They, they quickly it uh, mix it up, mm -hmm. bake it, and uh, give it to dogs. Dogs don't mind. Not refined. Uh, they're not refined. Dogs don't mind. Mm -hmm. But sometimes uh, a person could also eat it That's if they put less garbage into because it. More, of, because what? you have a mitzvah to feed your animal, no? That yeah. Of course. So of therefore, course. that's why it's allowed. Allow what? That's why this is allowed. One second. Uh, what exactly are you referring to? I'm saying that's how you're allowed to bake for a dog. Are you giving, are you giving, are you giving answer of the Gemara before the Gemara gives you the answer? Gemara just asked the question. What was Gemara's question? The Gemara's question is the same reason. How can you bake for a okay. dog? It says that you're allowed to bake it on Yom Tov. Gemara is asking, how can you bake for a dog? How could you bake it on Yom Tov? It's dog food. Just like you're not allowed to uh, cook. Right. It's only for, for a Jew you're allowed to cook. Right. You're not allowed to cook for dogs on Yom Tov either. Right. Dogs should eat something that was cooked before Yom Tov. Or for coming from the can, whatever dog food. Rabbi, why is it so for a to cook uh, on the Because it says lachem. For way, you. For non Jew, for Jew is okay. Oh, for Jew, right. for non Jew, right. right. Oh, okay, fine. Now, <clears throat> so we have a very good question. How could you cook? This dough or, or bake this dough on Yom Tov. Shani isat klavim hoil the evshel lefayas and benevelo. Why is this more, more is different than the, the dough of a goy? Half Jews have goys. Because half Jews have goys, at least half <laughs> belong to me. <coughs> but, and we said, therefore I cannot bake it. But over here, the whole thing I'm allowed to bake. This is. It belongs. Let's say I'm I'm a shepherd. I made this dough for the for the dogs. Right. How do you think I'm going to use it? I'm going to eat a little bit, and I'm going to give to my dogs a little bit. So it comes out. It's exactly the same case as as, as goys and Jews. Exactly. Half of it belongs to me, even if I, if I decide to eat it. Half of it belongs to them. But over here, there is a permission, permissibility to bake the entire thing. 
Why don't I say, no, separate it first. Your part, bake it separately. And whatever your dogs, don't bake now, but bake it Motzei Yom Tov. After the Yom Tov is over. No, we allow the whole thing to be baked. And Gemara says, because you could give the dogs Nevela. Nevela is? Nevela. Carcass, carcass. Uh, non-kosher meat. Let's say you have a non-kosher cow, sheep that you shafted. You don't want to, you, you cannot utilize it. You cannot eat it. Rodeo. Who do you think is going to eat it? Right? Something like that? Or, or has a halil, an animal, a predator, a wolf or a bear came, killed one of the animals. Now you, the dogs are going to have nevela <coughs> and you're going to have the entire bread. Nevela? Yeah. What's the difference between nevela and the whip? Trefa. Again, what's the question? Word, is that the same word for widow? No, that's widow. Uh, that's almona. Almona. Oh. Different word. Mm. Different word. Now that was fall, right? Nevela is like a fall. Yeah. Oh. yeah. 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 Oh. So what is the Gemara's answer? Gemara's answer that you have a, you are in control. You could give your dogs other food and turn this whole dough into uh-huh. your food. So we're learning an additional concept over here that if there is a chance that this could be complete with your meal, again, there is permissibility. Ah, Because it could be yours. Right. It could be utilized by you. It could be completely eaten by you. So if you cook for yourself and have leftovers, you can give the leftovers to your wife? Yeah, that could be good. <coughs> We're still not allowed to invite the going to uh, you for, with you on Yom Tov because maybe you will cook a separate meal for him. It's a midrabana. It's a midrabana. We, we talked about it last time. We're going to see it later. Umi it le le rab chizda hoyel. Does rab chizda hold of hoyel? Hoyel means since. Because we just utilized a uh, gemara's uh, twist, a logical twist called hoyel. Hoyel means since you could turn it into your food by giving the dogs the vela. But but this concept, because it could be, Rav Hiz doesn't hold of. Because it says, Someone who cooked on Yom Tov for a weekday. Now, did he do good or bad? Bad. Bad. Question is, does he get punished for it? <clears throat> I cooked on Yom Tov. On Yom Tov is on uh, Friday, uh, on Sunday. I cooked for Monday on Yom Tov. Is there a punishment for it? Mm-hmm. The answer is no. Why? Because it's not a conclusive prohibition. If it so would happen that an unexpected guest walked into my home on Sunday, on that last day of Yom Tov, I would be able to give it to them and they would finish it, their food. Would it, it would, would, would uh, uh, end up being utilized on Yom Tov. It would uh, end up being uh, uh, food of Yom Tov. The word you say is potential. So that that potential. Yeah, if you focus on the idea of potential, <coughs> it everything clarifies, comes, everything. clarifies right? So, so uh, it says we hear that Abchizda holds. Um, let's say like this. Avofem Yom Tov lechol. Rav Chizda doesn't hold of, of this potential. Rav Chizda Omer Loke. Rav Chizda says, you get malkot. You get punishment. Rabba Omer Einor Loke. Rabba says, you don't get malkot. Rav Chizda Omer Loke. Rav Chizda says, you get malkot. Lo amrinan hoil. We don't say since umikle le orchim. The guests could come. Chazile. He could eat it. Hashtanami <coughs> Chazile. He could eat it. Now it's permissible. Rabbi Omar, ain't it okay? I'm reading an oil. maybe. <coughs> so, um, so this oil only works according to Rabba, but it doesn't only according to Chizda. Okay. So, if so, why did Chizda himself said that you could bake the isa of clo- of of dogs on Yom Tov? You don't say oil. Maybe you'll give them the vela and you'll take it. You don't say that. According to Rabbi Chizda, you don't say oil. Gemara fixes it. Gemara sometimes is able to switch on the spot. No. Lo teima hoil ve'evsher ela de'et le'nevela de'vade evsher le'fais and nevela. Don't say since he could potentially give them nevela, a carcass, a um, an uncle's meat, but tell them he actually 
is giving difference between not potentially he could give them that potential too flimsy. Rav Chiz doesn't hold of this quasi a possibility that maybe could happen but doesn't really happen. No, it's more concrete. He actually prepared for them the veil. So He's giving the them question? food. So what is the whole question? There's no question. He prepared, for he prepared. So Mish is asking. He prepared for them the veil. And now he's allowed to, and this he's keeping for himself. So therefore, he is allowed to. Maybe, he, maybe the, maybe it's not still completely for him. It's not. He prepared for them the veil, but he didn't also specify that now the dough is going to be only for him. Mm-hmm. Dough is also for them. Okay. Maybe that's an explanation. Uh-huh. Maybe that's an answer a little bit. Because at the end of the day, it remains still Isat Klavim, the dough of dogs. He didn't switch it, but he <coughs> actually, um, it's, it's still dog's food, but he has Nevela ready. Ra- although Rasha says, when says, Kula Nechelet Adam, and it's going to come out that the entire dough is going to be eaten by a man. Um, <clears throat> so Rashi wants to say that it's going to come out that it's going to be eaten by it, the entire dough could be eaten by a man, by a person. But so according to that, if the entire is going to be eaten, then what's the whole question? Yeah. Like your question goes back to to its place. Uh, nevertheless, maybe we would think that. Uh, you're still not allowed to because who says that you will end up going following through with this? Maybe you'll change your mind and you will you won't do it. Um, or maybe there's many different uh, swaras you could say. I am not prepared to answer. It's a good question. I don't know, but what's the question? Misha is asking if at the end we said that he actually is going to give them. He has an available to give them. So what's the whole question? It's portrait. It's simple. I understand that you could bake this dough because now now it becomes already became food for the person, for the people, not for the dogs. Mm. What do you say? Because he has an avail, he has made dogs. Because he, we said that we're changing the case a little bit, but he actually is gonna give the dogs an avail. But he had also this <coughs> dough prepared for them as well. It happens to be. Now Nevela became available, now he has both. Yeah, Gemara doesn't say that he is going to give them Nevela and keep the dough for himself. It says that he has Nevela and now it's a uh, real possibility that, is gonna, that could, he could give them Nevela. Not possibility that okay. if he could have given them Nevela. Therefore he holds if guests would be at the house then he would hold, he can also probably cook. Yes. If you have some... Good, good point. If there is already guests, then it's... Then you're cooking for Yom Tov, then I cook for Monday, whatever it is. No, you really... Um, but even if you're not cooking, let's say guests are in the house, but they are, the eight will already be three. Right. Oh, I see. Uh, maybe there is a... Yeah, that's what they say in the, on the Dabar That's what it sounds like. Sounds Those like that. Those that subscribe to the principle of Choyl hold that as long as there is any possibility... That the act may result in Yom Tov eating, the Yom Tov has not been violated. Rav Chizda, however, only permits malacha when it can definitely result in Yom Tov eating, even if it not, even if it might not ultimately be used for such a purpose. Therefore, if a carcass is available, the dough may be baked, since the carcass can be given to the dogs, resulting in the dough being eaten by humans. Cooking for guests who have not arrived, though, is prohibited, since it is possible that no guests will arrive that day. But you're taking it a step further. Yeah, I'm saying that if, if guests would be available, would be available, and they all they all they already in your house. Exactly. Even if they are not, they didn't come for Suda. Exactly. It's different. Because okay. there's a real potential. <coughs> real potential. Okay. okay. Possibility that they can. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Right. So okay. Good point. point. Good point. So everyone is invited to my house on Yom Tov. <laughs> okay. Let's go on. Can give up. No one continues, okay? Two dots. Now we're going to have 
We're going to have a very interesting case. Or they asked Ravuna, Bnei Baga, a uh, army of Goyim, or general. They, uh, imagine you are in Ukraine, and we live in a small J Jewish town called like uh, Berdichev or Oman, right? And all of a sudden, the Russian army comes in, and they say, and they say each household is supposed to cook for us. We're going to come in every night. And whatever uh, you have in your refrigerator, matzah bowl, matzah, right? Uh, uh, say uh, Jewish kosher, the Pesach pastrami, whatever. Some bread we made for the dogs. <laughs> <laughs> whatever you have, we're gonna eat it. They, 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 they are, uh, oh, they, they uh, obligated the Jewish population to feed them, which would, would, would be happening. Would, would be a routine thing. And now, Maula Foto Biyomtov. Can you bake it on Yomtov? Rabbi, wouldn't that be um, Pekuach Nefesh? First, let's yeah, understand the question. First, yeah, I, right. who can tell me what the question is first? How can you cook for a bride? Right? For a soldier? <clears throat> for a galatist? Uh... Um, one second. We basically, they only obligated us. It's not like they they just told us, we're going to come and eat with you. We're going to come and eat so with you. So now when you're cooking, potentially you're cooking, maybe I might use this to feed a guy. So, so look what Gimara is going to say. So you're right. They are going to be expecting food. You're supposed to, on Yom Tov, you're supposed to also fill in the quota and cook food for them. But aren't you going to be ending up cooking for a guy? So let's see. Look what the answer is. Amar lehu. He told them, Chazina, you have to watch. If they will give a piece of bread, if they don't mind giving a piece of bread from what you gave them to a child, Vilokavdi, <coughs> uh, no. You have to see if they're going to give, if they give bread to a, um, uh, to a child, it's, it's permissible. We look Kavdi, say like this. We have to see, in Bnei Akforim Nutnim Pat Latinot, Mamashu Ofevan Sheyam El Choma, Eina Makpidim Al Kach, Okay. Uh, right. So give me a minute. So like this. If you could give one piece to a Jewish child from what you're baking for them, then it's considered as if every <laughs> loaf that you baked for them, you baked for a Jew. But if you cannot give one piece, then it's prohibited to bake all the bread for them. Unless it's for Torah, right? <clears throat> right. But it's, it's, not the same, it's the same example like with a dog, almost. How? Because the same thing, potentially you can eat it, potentially it's edible for a human being, for a Jewish human, right? Right. Potentially, so therefore, we say the whole thing is permitted. And over here too, since potentially, if they wouldn't... Even though, even though one child is not going to eat from all those pieces, and most of these pieces are going to go, all of them, besides for maybe one, are going to go to the goyim. But everything is permissible. Right. To Why? Be. That's interesting. And uh, the answer is because you never know which one gonna uh, is going to go to a girl. Since every one potentially can be could go to a Jew. Uh -huh. So we say on each one, this is this could be a Jewish. We bake it, and this one could also be Jewish. We bake it. This one could also be Jewish. And we bake it. 
Let's go on. Vatanya masse beshimen at imani shilo ba emish the best of medrash beshachris. Ah, Gemara asked a question, but there was a story with Shimon and Timoni who didn't come to Beth Midrash. Matzor Rabbi Yehuda ben Baba, Omer Lo, with name Malo Bata. Rabbi Yehuda ben Baba has found him and told him, Why didn't you come to Beth Midrash to, to learn? Omer Lo, Bol Shes Ba'a Lireinu, we had a army come to our town, who Bikshalach Tov Eskola Ir. And they wanted to take all of the food. And we shechted for them a calf and we gave it to, the, to eat. And they became happy and they left. Rabbi Yehuda ben Baba told them, I wonder if you transgressed an Isur. Shari Amra Torah Lachem. Torah says to you, Velola of the Chachovim, and not Vugoim. So there was a story that contradicts what we said before. Yeah. Because the story was pretty similar. The, the army came, they shifted for them a piece of the of a calf, gave it to them, they ate, and they left. And for some reason, Rabbi Yudav and Ben Baba was not happy about it. He said, It's a problem. Gemara asks, Vamai Hachazi Limechel Minei. Why is it a problem? You could eat it if they don't object. Again, the same logic. <coughs> yeah. Amar Rav Yosef, Egel Treifa Havoy. It was non kosher. The Egel was non kosher. Mm. Egel is a uh, calf. calf. <coughs> that answers it. Because no Jew. Even a tinok, even a little boy, cannot eat from treif, non kosher animal. Comes out when they sh- when they eat barbecue, we make shashlik with that uh, eagle. But then no, you could eat it. Then they weren't allowed to cook. Why would they? So that's exactly them? why he objected. Why did you cook for them? You thought that it, everything is fine and dandy, right. but you cooked non kosher meat for them. No, one second. No, I can't. We have to finish one second. Oh, so I'll come to. I'll come over to you. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'll hang out for the five. We'll see. If we'll finish soon, within ten minutes. Ten minutes, okay? We'll finish nine thirty. Oh, so I can wait. Nine thirty, finish. So Gemara. So we have the clear. We have the Gemara clear, right? Non-kosher egel. They transgressed. It was problem. Gemara asks on that. Vahachazil klavi. But it's something that the dogs could eat. <coughs> um, now, can you shecht something for your dogs? We're thinking right now that you could. Gemara says, Tanoihi. It's Machloki Tanoi. The Tanya, Acha Shayachalachal Nefesh, Hulabado Yasalachem. Whatever is food you could make for yourself, mimashma from the fact that it says shneimar lechol nefesh. It says anything that could be eaten by by all nefesh by uh, a life entity person, uh, you could cook. So when we're learning, we're learning from those who are nefesh. Even if it's an animal, kinyan shneimar, like that's a different place in pasuk. Umaken nefesh beema shall mena. Someone who kills an animal has to pay to its owner. Talmud lomar lachem. That's why pasuk says lachem for you, lachem v'lul klavim. Dear Rabbi Yossi, to you and not for dogs. That's what Rabbi Yossi said. This is dear Rabbi Yossi Aglili. Rabbi Yosef Lili said that. Rabbi Akiva Omer, Afilu Nefesh Behima Mashma, even an animal is included, period. So you see that's Machlokit Tanay. You can Matal Mudlomer Lachem. So if you could cook for an animal, why does it say Lachem? What do we learn from the word Lachem? It comes to exclude something. Lachem, Lulu, Vdiku Chavim. 
Um, not going for you, not going. Umar eat a lerabas at a clubim, well, the hot say at a holy cohobim. What is this discrimination? Why are you saying you're allowed to cook on your top for your animals, but you're not allowed to cook for goim? Marbea any at a clubim, we include the animals, shimizonatan alecha, umatse any at a holy cohobim, shenus no alecha. We include the animals because you are obligated to feed them, because you're supposed to feed your animals. And we exclude the goyim. So we don't know what to, what is included in Pazuk, what is excluded in Pazuk. We have a choice. Is it your animals or is it goyim? We say we got to include the goyim and we incl- uh, include the, your animals and, uh, not, and uh, not goyim. Now, if we learn from, we're going to stop here. We're learning from here that, on, that animals that are not yours, animals that don't belong to you, and you don't, you're not obligated to feed, like who? A stray dog that runs on the street, mm-hmm. or pigeons that are, or dogs. dogs. Mm-hmm. So those you're not allowed to cook for or carry, or carry food for on Yom Tov. Mm-hmm. It's not considered to be Tzorech Yom Tov, uh, necessary for Yom Tov. So we're stopping here, we didn't get So how is he allowed to cook for those soldiers then? <clears throat> if it so, was trafe, I don't understand. Oh, so we never answered that, right? How's he allowed to cook? Because maybe he was cooking for his animal, for his dog? Because his dog could have eaten it. Maybe it was because of the fish. <coughs> because it's much more over here that they wanted to rob the entire city. Now, if someone is going to be robbing you, if they don't get it, it could be Pikuach Nefesh because so somebody is going to... Well, it's not clear that it's Pikuach Nefesh, but it could come to Pikuach Nefesh. Well, even maybe if it's not Pikuch Nefesh, but it may be a big half set, it could, uh, they could lose everything. Uh-huh. Maybe we find that something which is a Sudra Rabbanan, if you're going to, if it's going to be such a, because if you lose all your money, then it's also like Pikuch Nefesh. Oh, really? Because you're not going to survive, you're going to starve to death. So maybe you can just guess the Rabban. So we'll have to see in the Mephoshim explanation soon. But this is not a Rabban, it's not a Rabban. Um, oh, this is a, a cook for, for the guys. Yeah. Okay. okay, let's we'll stop here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, I know that you have to take the measurement. Let's make a broker. I'll call you when it's ready and then. Which one? 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 Which